Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Gay Let's Play Dragon Age Inquisition. In our last episode, we uh, kicked off some specialization stuff, and we're going to see about making art uh, enchanter, night enchanter. But um, we're going to see about uh, learning about all of the other specializations as well. I also learned that each of our companions have specializations that are conveniently unlocked in one side started, you know, training up on these uh, specializations. Excuse me. Sorry. Um, <laughs> just had dinner. And um, I believe um, Josephine had returned back from one of, her, one of her quests, so I'm gonna go ahead and assign her something else. Strike a bargain with merchant princes. The bundle of documents, at least 50 pages thick, explains the trade agreement the Inquisition has entered into the merchant princes of... Mantiva, Josephine is attached a note. Inquisitor, I am more than satisfied with the agreement we reached with the merchant princes. Here is a duplicate if you wish to review it. I would put aside three days and two dozen candles. Ambassador Montelier, 76 gold and a bunch of influence. Um, gain Orzammar's friendship. I believe this is also a Josephine only, so give her this. I would advise sending a delegation to Orzammar as soon as possible to cement this alliance with the King of Balin. King Balin. Inquisitor. Which is what who Ang Angelus did end up putting on the throne, for better or for worse. That's all I wanted to do, War Council. So according to uh, the quest for the specializations, I can talk to the people who actually have these specializations to get their books, maybe. Because if that doesn't work, then I guess I left I left um, Orle for no good reason. Um, but hey, any excuse to talk to Dorian again, Art's not gonna not gonna mind at all. So listen, Dorian, Dorian, Dorian. Did Dorian move? Oh, there you are, Dorian. Oh! We have a cutscene now. I guess we raised his approval enough. Anything interesting? A letter regarding Felix, Alexius' son. Hmm. He went to the Magisterium, stood on the Senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was. He's dead. The Blight caught up with him. Oh. Felix is a good guy. He was a good guy. Are you alright? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. It doesn't mean you can't regret his death. Yeah. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinter could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. Were the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. I'm just curious. No. I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Okay, well that's good to know. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around... You knew things could be better. Still, you two seem to be very close. So... He should be an example for others to follow, or his death is wasted. Should I spread the word? We could spawn the cult of Felix within a matter of days. There are worse things. <laughs> Probably true. And you're right. His actions should not be forgotten. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas. Aw, oh, thanks. I think you were talking about me, Dorian. Dorian. Oh, acquired way of the necromancer for more talatasi for the living of the dead. The words of a speaker vice annex make uh, one passage stand out. We are of this world, and as a myth with any peace that seeks to leave its element, there is void. There is a void that when we abandon the mortal. It must be that this would hold our returning to the Maker. It must be that we should seek balance. It must be that the Maker's first children 
aid the second, an account. Breath ceased on the hour exactly. We felt his absence in that moment, and we were ready. It was gentle, and all were calmed by the signs of spirit and spirit entering, knowing there would be no chains on their loved one, unfettered, unfettered, he would find the side of the maker. But that was not the training for the battlefield. I had heard the accounts and knew my role, and I was ready. Then our warrior signaled the charge, and I was not ready. Breath was not stilled by the hour and was not gentle, and I was sore afraid. Then the enemy countered, and I saw blades come for the good men whom I had stood beside, and I would not allow it. The dead who had fallen, I bid their forms to serve, and it was the turn of our foes to know fear. But I had peace, for I had granted the fallen greater purpose, and doing, had honored life by protecting it. This is a very interesting philosophy. The necromancers here have more... When, when they explain to you what they're doing and the... And the motivation behind it it's not as sinister as you might it would as you might typically think it would be for a necromancer so that's pretty cool detailed ritual instructions follow cool i ran into fiona seems you have alexius serving the mages there's some justice in that after what he did to them maybe one day he'll realize it you said alexius was a mentor of yours he was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption, how we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he... gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburgh, a darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. Hmm. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. The guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while and then we drifted apart. Hmm. That must have been difficult. Back then, I was furious. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. Was it hard being away from him? It was hard not having a patron, yes. I'm not exactly built to fit in. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. Sad, really. I should go. Naturally. Take care, Dorian. There is an exclamation point here. Oh, there's Vivienne. Can I assist you? Hmm. I'd like to know more about you, Madame Vivienne. How sweet of you, my dear. But I'm sure there's nothing I can say that you don't already know. Do you not have your book on you? Or maybe I already have the book. Go to the war table. Do I already have the book? What is this one over here? Something's over there. Maybe I already have the book while I was here. Um, the way, blah, 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 blah. Acquire writing on Night Enchanter. No, I don't have it yet. Bloodstone. I need... Oh, I need ten bloodstones. Acquire writing on Night Enchanter methods. I need Wisp and Lazarite. Acquire writing on Rift Magic. Is that with Solus? Oh, wait. Is it here? Ah, Weight of the Night Enchanter. From rank and roll in victory. Commander Helene's words make one passage stand out. Many are reluctant to include the rank, but that, that is because it is rare enough that they have not yet seen it deployed. Most change their mind when they fight alongside. All change their mind when they fight against. An account. The training was not pleasant for me. When, I, when first I exited my circle, I was a babe new to the world. And then I was in battle, in defense of a nation and name. And the lines did form. And my fellow mages took their positions in the rear. And I stepped forward. 
Then my place in the fray opened, and those of muscle and blade were around me, and I was not afraid. For I knew my role and worth, and soon did all others know them as well. Any concerns I had that the knights would not heed evaporated. All knew the rank, their place, and the value of that to their lives. Our blades were of different kin, but our purpose was clear and defined. On the field, in the battle, I command. Detailed principles and examples of command follow. Thank you, Vivian. Didn't mean to jump on your bed there, dear. Alright, um... Alright, man, I have to go find... Solus. Solus. Um... I think Solus is... Oh! Mother Giselle has something for me. That's what the exclamation point was for. No, this is not where Solus is. Forgot where Solus is. Solus is over there. Okay. I guess it makes sense that the mages are in the tower. There's Solus. Greetings. Uh, I already talked to you about this. We'll talk later. Goodbye. All right, so it should be here somewhere. Is it up there? Oh, it's probably. I bet you it's up there. That's what this ladder was for. The Rotunda and Fresso, Sister Leliana. As per your request, I have made thorough examination of the fresco adorning the rotunda. I first attempted to clarify its intent with Messenger Solus. Forgive me. I know he is not titled within the structure of the Inquisition, but the more I learn of his experience, the more awkward I feel not using a formal honorific. On the mural, all Messer would say is, Skyhold is his fortress, meaning, of course, the Inquisitor, and these are his actions. He is, of course, correct. The subject of each edition is self-evident. On the medium and method, it is elven fresco, pigment and plaster, and it is grand. I have barely been privileged to observe such skill as it is applied. It is considered with long periods of study before the image emerges, whole cloth and with creativity. It speaks of how I imagine elves to be the world, and the measured nature of their step. I should expect such competence from Messer, given his probably years of study, but it is still an amazing work, demonstrating an art with few living practitioners, even among the Dalish, archivists and banning. Oh, I think I saw the book. There it is. Here it is. Way of the Rift Mage. From the, po the from power bleeds, harness the flow. Your trainer's words make one passage stand out. There are no tomes dedicated to this manipulation. There has been no time for academics, only the practical, and not in a manner that mitigates risk. Power in a raw form has found an outlet, both visible and in ways that we only we of arcane pro proclivity can sense. The great, the risk is great. An account. From this page forward, there are the notes of Thelric. They began as the work of my mentor, Julian, and I will continue in the research she began as she cannot because she is dead. The rift we were examining did not react well to her last investigation. We believed ourselves prepared for demonic manifestation. We were not prepared for how the energies we expected would be encountered. Well versed in the forces that magic can produce, my senior was surprised by an alteration and deviance. That which previously had to be coaxed is now a flood that must be staunched. The same amount in, in different intensity. Quick to expose fault in the way it is accessed. She drew too much, expecting resistance. There was none, and her form suffered the brunt. Tread carefully in studies of new matters, for I cannot unsee the end of her. Scattered symbols and sketches follow. Okay. So... The next thing I'm going to do... Is... Um, we're going to... Talk to Mother Giselle, that's right, before Inquisitor, I forget. Inquisitor, if you have a moment. Sure. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions, the Devinto. Dorian? What has he done? <sighs> has Dorian done something wrong? No, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pavas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? They're not on good terms. He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. 
Yes. I believe you're correct. Sir Framley sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. Mm -hmm. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Oh no. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped. I don't know if I want to trick Dorian. I would probably try to talk to him and convince him to see his parents. They don't... What kind of meeting? Just what kind of meeting do they have in mind? I believe they just want to talk. To understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhere private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. Oh, but I like having Dorian around here. <laughs> I'd be worried too if my son ran off to join some gauche foreigners on a crusade. So would I. Although I suspect there's more to it than either of us understands. Hmm. They don't want Dorian to know? That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse. Yeah. And the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting without his foreknowledge, I know. But does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? See, okay. Art actually thinks... Deep in his heart, or Dorian should go talk to his parents. His parents are reaching out to him. They should... He should at least hear them out. I mean, they're his parents. At least talk to them. Art agrees to that, assuming that is all that it's going to be. You know, that they're just going to talk to him. Um, and maybe... I don't think, but at the same, but I don't think Art wants to deceive Dorian. He wouldn't want to lie to him. I mean, he respects Dorian too much, and he's... You know, starting to get really close to him, and the worst thing that I think he could do at this point is to lie to him. Even if it's for the greater good, and even if it's good intentions. I think ideally, Art would try to talk to Dorian and try to convince him to see his parents without, like, lying about it. That's what I would like for Art to be able to do. Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry. But they know what I represent. Got it. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. Are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venator? Right, it might be a trap. Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. Well, you know what? I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. Oh, I'll protect him. Don't worry, Art will protect him. Yeah, I'm not going to trick Dorian. If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. Fair enough. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. I want to talk to him. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. I want to talk to him. Official looking letter. Your Reverence, I understand that you feel inadequate to the task of bringing Dorian to a secret meeting. Even in the asking, I find it difficult to believe myself, considering my son has rebuffed all contact. This is the only way. I know him. He would be too proud to come if he knew, even just to talk. That is all we wish to do. The thought of Dorian in the South placing himself um, in the path of such danger alarms us more than I can express. If this somehow succeeds, we have a family retainer at the Vendral Hills watching for Dorian's arrival. He will bring the boy to us, somewhere private. Ooh, this is kind of getting a little sketchy. If Dorian utterly refuses to go with him, it ends there, and there is nothing we can do. We are at our wit's end. Graciously yours, Magister Holward of House Pavis. Um, it seems legit. 
but I'm not gonna lie to Dorian. Art wouldn't do that. He, again, he respects Dorian way too much to just lie to him outright. So he, what he's going to do is going to... I'm hoping he can tell Dorian about it and convince him to go. And if not, well... Once you roam Skyhold all day... Aw, Dorian. Here and there you run checking in on your followers. Why don't they come to you? Feed you grapes, rub your shoulders. I suppose it's more fun this way. For me, I mean. You're rather strapping. Dorian, if you want to, you know, if you want to come and rub my shoulders, I will definitely do the same for you and feed you grapes, my man. I've noticed you're rather strapping yourself. Of course you have. That only takes eyes. <gasps> Dorian. Luckily, I have those. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you do. A rather fetching pair. They're purple. At any rate, you didn't pass by to hear me fall. Something on your mind? Yeah, because, um... Yeah, his purple eyes are very exotic. I'm pretty sure a man of Dorian's tastes would really appreciate the purple eyes. Tell Dorian about his family's attended meeting. Yeah, I'm gonna tell him. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? <laughs> a humorous proposal from some Antiban dowager? No. Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son. What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinter. I won't let him. That would be hard to do while I stood there. He expects me to travel with Mother Giselle. Although Maker knows why he'd think I would. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. Well, that was easy. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. Not that it's any of my business, Dorian, but I'm just curious. What exactly is the issue between the two of you? There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. Mm -hmm. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Mm. Because you wouldn't get married? Because you left? That too. You should talk to him. I think you should meet with this retainer. Find out what your family wants. I didn't ask what you thought, did I? Dorian, don't be like that. That was unworthy, I apologize. Dorian. There'd be no harm in hearing what this man of my father's has to say. If I don't like it, however, I want to leave. Art's just looking out for Dorian's... He's just looking out for Dorian. He's just making sure that Ori Dorian doesn't do anything that he regrets. I think Art... Again, he's a very empathic Canari, and I think that he feels Dorian's pain. But at the same time, I think that Art... He feels that Art has to say something to Dorian because nobody else will. And, and he feels that if anyone's going to convince him to talk to his family, it's going to be Art. It's going to have to come from Art because I don't think anyone else will be able to convince him. Because I think they've reached a point in their friendship where Art's able to speak frankly. And when he did and Dorian lashed out to him, Dorian immediately apologized because he felt, he felt like that really wasn't... It, he wasn't direct. It wasn't directing it towards art. He was more directing it towards his dad and the situation. Your parents are reaching out to you. Doesn't that mean something? Only that they're trying to choke me. <laughs> Don't mind me. Let's see what comes. <laughs> of it. Do you have anything else to say about this, Dorian? I can't believe my father's gall. Of course, he couldn't come here to Skyhold. No. That would be too much. But contacting some southern cleric on the sly, much wiser. If this is some venatory connivance, I will be utterly disappointed. Well, you're welcome for show, for telling you the truth and not hiding it from you. I should go. As you wish. All right. I was going to say we're going to go somewhere else. But you know what? 
We're gonna help Dorian. Cause I want to help Dorian. We're going back to the hinterland. Yes. Uh Storytell mentioned it. No 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 no. We're going to be Yeah. We are going to one less Benatori. Um, this, they may come from the same place, but there's a world of difference between the Venatori and the most people from the Tevinter. Dorian wants a particular group of Venatori mages dead. Last resort of good men. Mother Giselle passed along this letter written, um, by Dorian's father. Dorian may wish to read it, but it may be best to take him to the tavern to sort out this own person. Let's do this one first. Farmland security. Oh, because we have to finish farmland security. Let, let's, let's, let's go here first and then make our way towards towards the last resort of good men. I think that's a good idea. So Redcliffe Farms then. Travel. Travel to location. We're gonna bring Dorian. I wanna bring Cole because Cole hasn't seen any action with me. Um, and... Let's bring Thib. Thib hasn't been to... We haven't brought Thib to the Hinterlands yet, so... You know, just because he hasn't seen it, well... He hasn't seen it with us. Might as well bring him along. Plus, you know, we get to find out what banter we have with uh, our new companions. This is exciting! Because uh, I know all of you out there have not gotten sick and tired of the Hinterlands just yet. <laughs> it's okay. The Hinterlands is actually you know, probably one of the more massive maps, one of the larger maps. I think some of the other maps are slightly smaller, because the Storm Coast one was smaller. Don't know about the Fallow Mire and all those other good ones. All that, excuse me, other good stuff. I think, by the way, someone confirmed to me that that um, farming the craftable items that are plants does not deplete the resources, which I guess kind of makes sense, because they can... They can they have seeds and stuff, and they tend to plants tend to grow faster than animals because if you keep killing off all the animals, they end up not um, lasting for very long. Dorian has to level up. Um, Dorian, you are already a necromancer, which means I think I am going to send you that path, my friend, because I don't intend to be a necromancer. Horror. You unleash spirits of fear that terrify all enemies within the area. Panic duration 6 seconds, area effect 3 meters, cooldown time. How could anyone be horrific of you, Dorian? I do not understand that. Cole, I'm gonna have you ride this one. Um. There we go. Let's go, Kong Lao. All right. Very nice. I love our armored horse. Whoa. Thank you, Cole. That wasn't too far, was it? Braun, we did if it. Those refugees are going to defend themselves. They'll need real defenses. I've got a few ideas. I've built the watchtowers. I've built watchtowers in the areas you recommended. Nicely done. That will give both your refugees and our farmers some warning next time trouble pays a visit. I'll speak to the master and have weapons sent to your people at the crossroads. Thank you. Yes, they we've got the power. We helped. Their lives are better because of us. Yes. Cole approves. Uh, what is your... You're a reaver. The Iron Bull's combat style has honed his aggression and anger to a killing edge. He has learned to turn his own pain into a fury that makes him even deadlier when the fight gets bloody. Nice. Do I want to finish up his... Pommel strike gets harder and faster. Maybe I'll do that later. Kind of want to have him dip into his reaver abilities. The Iron Bull's combat style... Um... You mark a ring of pain, you mark a part of the battlefield as yours. Enemies inside the ring take spirit damage, while your own attacks inside the ring hit harder. The more you are hurt, the stronger both effects are. Nice. Kind of want to read um, Dorian's 
Necromancer. Dorian is well-versed in spells that bind and manipulate fade spirits, a practice that does not have the same stigma in the Tevinter Imperium as it does elsewhere in Thetis. Makes sense. And Cole... Um... As a spirit dedicated to mercy, Cole is oddly suited to killing enemies with speed and precision. He can eliminate targets uh, too dangerous to face directly with strikes they never even notice. Did I just call my horse in the house? Sorry, sorry, sir. I'll take him out. Okay. Uh, let's take care of these Venatori for Dorian. I mean, this is pretty much Dorian Day. Good boy. now. The only way to travel. Ah, here we are. Parry, spinning blades, death blow. Dorian, you do the honors. This is your this is the mission you wanted to do, right? St oh, start with the static cage. Ring of pain. Or or shattering strike first. Then you might do a ring of pain as well. Gotta put up protect Cole. Nice. Cole, do your thing. Spinning blades. Oh my gosh, Cole. That is amazing. Cole, you are amazing. Greatly approves. Good stuff, everybody. Dark and Samite. Takes care of. Ooh, Silk Brocade. Takes care of the Venatori. Alright. That cleared that. Now we have a whole bunch of these other things, which we'll do some other time. And something over there, which we'll do at some other time. But we're gonna travel. Um, can we fast travel to Redcliffe? Yeah, we can. Cool. Okay. But, uh, we're gonna end the video here, though. But in the next video, we're going to see what results from this meeting to talk to Dorian's parents. Let's look around. Is it a trap? Or is this totally legit? And even if it is legit, does that mean that our beloved Dorian is gonna leave the Inquisition forever? Guess we'll just have to wait and see. So thanks again for watching, guys, and until then, love yourselves and love each other.